Hey guys, how are you doing today? Dr. Stephanie Stroud with Cornerstone's Pet Tip of the Week. Um, a few weeks back, I got asked the question on one of the videos if cats can give you guys diseases. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. You know, um, you have questions, you know, what diseases can I get from my cats? Can they give me any at all? Um, so we're going to talk about that. So when we talk about animals in general giving diseases to humans, that's something called zoonotic. And so we want to talk about zoonotic diseases and the potential of zoonotic diseases between cats and humans. So in general, the risk of us as humans getting a disease from our cats is very, very minimal, okay? The people that have the most risk are those that are immunocompromised or don't have a developed immune system yet. So examples of that would be um, certainly elderly people, um, people that are immunocompromised by either, you know, they have a long-term infection with AIDS or they're undergoing cancer therapy and chemotherapy so their immune systems be wiped out as they're trying to kill cancer. Certainly children do not have a fully developed immune system and so they are going to be um, at a higher risk factor for contracting diseases from um, the cats. So you know there is a whole um, exhaustive list that we could go over but we're going to just kind of briefly touch on um, the most common diseases um, that you can get from your kitty cats and things that you can do to try to help prevent them. So um, one that you hear a lot on the news or can be very scary that you hear about and one of the biggest ones is something called cat scratch fever and that is actually what that is, is it's a bacterial disease um, that is transmitted by fleas, the cat fleas, okay? And the dirt from that can get under a cat's nails, it can be in their mouth, and so if a cat or your cat were to scratch you um, or were to um, bite you, um, they could have this on them and you could potentially get cat scratch disease, cat scratch fever is another common name. And so definitely anytime you have a scratch, you wanna wash it very thoroughly with uh, soap and water, um, and then, you know, if you are seeing any excessive redness or pain or swelling, you definitely need to be evaluated by your doctor, okay? Uh, the next one that I see a lot um, or that we hear about a lot is actually comes from cat bites as well. This is something called Pasteurella multocida. It's a bacteria that cats carry in their mouths. And so because cat's teeth are very needle-like, when they tend to bite, they end up injecting essentially that bacteria into um, the body. And so that is why, you know, if you get a cat bite, we always recommend going to your doctor right away um, because they, you may need to be started on antibiotic therapy. That's for them to decide, of course, because they are the human doctors and I am not. But cat bites can be very serious. Um, any bite is very serious but cat bites are especially serious because of that bacteria that they carry in their mouth. And so again, taking basic measures, don't you know, um, allow small children to play with cats as cats may not have um, the patience with small children and they could easily bite them or scratch them. And so that would be easy ways to kind of avoid that is avoid getting scratched and bitten by your kitty cat. Um, know kind of the cat's stress level so they don't feel like they need to go on the defense and definitely um, being very careful with stray cats or cats that are feeding um, that are around the farm and outside. Okay, um, next one that you can get is something called salmonella. Um, you probably heard about that on the news, salmonella poisoning. Most of the time you think about getting it from undercooked meat or getting it from eggs, uh, but your cats can actually carry it too. And most of the time cats carry it and transmit it to you um, because they are eating raw meat. Okay, that's one of the reasons that we do not recommend feeding raw diets to kitty cats because they can ingest some of that bacteria. Salmonella being one of them, they can pass it on and they can pass it to you via their feces, um, their bowel movements, so when you're cleaning up. Um, so always wanna make sure you're using good hygiene after you clean the litter box and um, feeding your kitty cats a commercial diet or a cooked diet will help to avoid um, some of that potential risk of salmonella poisoning in your kitty cats. Um, next we have um, parasites, okay? Um, anything from scabies to roundworms to hookworms, okay? All of those have potential of being zoonotic and being transmitted um, to you all as humans, okay? Um, roundworms and hookworms are transmitted in the stool. And so again, one of the best ways to prevent that is by 
cleaning, making sure you are cleaning the litter box regularly, um, washing your hands afterwards. But keep in mind that outdoor, outdoor kitty cats, where do they defecate? Okay, oftentimes they defecate in your garden, in the soil. And so wearing gloves when you're gardening will help reduce that risk. Um, definitely, again, children are very high in this list of getting those because they go outside, they eat dirt, and they don't think about washing their hands, they just take the dirt and eat it right away. Um, whether the cat has urinated or defecated in it already, you know, that is to be unknown. And so taking some of those preventive measures and making sure that you are instilling in your children good hygiene, um, as well as just keeping that good hygiene yourself, okay? Um, next, um, ringworm is one we see. Um, so definitely if you are seeing any areas of your cat's skin that they are itchy or if they um, are having hair loss, they ought to be evaluated by a veterinarian. Um, and if you're seeing any skin lesions on yourself, definitely again, like I said, you need to consult your own doctor for that. Um, but ringworm is something that can be transmitted from animals to humans. Okay. Um, the last ones we're kind of kind of talk about um, are other GI parasites called protozoa. So um, three names that um, I'm going to put out there are definitely crypti cryptosporidiosis, um, giardiasis, and toxoplasma. Okay, um, those are again protozoa parasites, and typically they are transmitted um, by being in contact with the feces. That is how you would potentially. Be get that transmission. And so um, you definitely want to take care and making sure you have good hygiene, that's, I'll say that over and over again, um, after you are doing the litter box. Toxoplasma is especially um, potential for being transferred to women who are pregnant. And so we advise that if you are pregnant um, or are trying to get pregnant, uh, we recommend other family members cleaning the litter box. Um, Cleaning it on a daily basis is going to reduce those risk factors because you're not having a buildup of everything. So cleaning the litter box on a daily basis, washing your hands afterwards. If you feel a need, you know, sometimes we even recommend um, wearing gloves when you're cleaning the litter box, trying to put another barrier between you and the feces um, and disposing of it in a proper way. Those are all things that you want to make sure that you do. So again, this is not an exhaustive list. This is some of the more common things. Um, if you have questions about a specific disease or um, a specific question about your, your pet, you ought to talk to your veterinarian and they'll be able to give you more details on that. But that is just a, a, a broad spectrum list. So to recap, make sure you have good hygiene, wash your hands. Um, after you are you know, working in the garden, um, cleaning the litter box, um, before you eat, you know, um, those are your big three things to make sure that you're doing, um, dealing with it and preventing. Again, most people don't have a problem. Um, children, the elderly, and those that have um, a, are immunocompromised, um, meaning their immune system is not working as functionally as it should, are all at higher risk for zoonotic diseases. So if you have questions, feel free to drop them below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and you guys have a fantastic Monday. And any other topics you guys are interested in wanting to hear about, drop those below too, because I wanna um, help you guys and give you tips for whatever you have questions about. We'll chat with you later, bye-bye.